Hi, my name is Christo Valandis Mochlas and in this video tutorial about Joomla I will show you how to install Joomla locally on your computer. First of all we have to open our favorite browser and go to the web page with the technical requirements of Joomla. This is the URL. Here we can see what are the minimum and the recommended requirements for Joomla 1.5. It is recommended to have the program language PHP from version 5.2, the database MySQL from version 4.1 and the Apache server from version 2. All these things together are included in a software package called ZAMP. Here you can see the URL and I will show you how to install it in Windows. Therefore we go and click on the link ZAMP for Windows. Then it takes us to the web page of ZAMP for Windows and we can see what is all included in this package of ZAMP. All what we need, Apache, MySQL and PHP is here. So we scroll a little bit down and here we click under download on ZAMP. And here we see there are three types of downloadable files. The file we are going to download is the installer package. So we click on the link and it takes us to the page of sourceforge.net and here we click on save file to download the file on our computer our next step is to go to the web page with the Joomla download here you can see the URL in order to download the latest version of Joomla here's the full package we click on zip which is the file format, it's a compressed file and then OK to download it. In case you want to download a translation for your language if it is not English, in this URL you find a list with several languages for Joomla. Most of the times there are two files for each language. One is for the administration backend and the other for the front-end. After we have finished with all downloads we open the download folder and we go to find the installer package for ZAMP. Here it is. We double click on the installer file for ZAMP to begin the installation. Then we choose our language and click on OK. Here we get a warning from Vista. It isn't any problem at all. We click on OK to get on with it. So here we click Next to continue with the installation. And here we choose the destination folder where ZAMP should be installed. In our case it is the C hard disk and the name of the folder is ZAMP. And we click Next to continue. On the next window we choose to create a ZAMP desktop icon as well as an entry for the ZAMP folder in the start menu. Then we choose to install the Apache server, the MySQL, as well as FileZilla FTP server as Windows services. And click on install to continue. In the meantime we might get some warning from Windows Firewall that some of the program features has been blocked. We have to click on unblock to unblock it and continue with the installation. After the installation has finished, we get a message that the installation was successful. We click on OK and then we click Yes in order to open the control panel for ZAMP. And here on the control panel for ZAMP we can see all the services that are running at the moment. These are the Apache server, the MySQL, and the FileZilla FTP server. 
and then we click on exit to close the control panel. So after we install ZAMP, we open a favorite browser and type in this address which takes us to the welcome screen of ZAMP. Then we go and click on status to see the status of the ZAMP's components. What is important is that the MySQL database is activated as well as the PHP programming language. Next step is to go and click on security where ZAMP will give us an overview of the system's security. Here we see that ZAMP's pages are accessible by network for everyone. This is something we have to fix that the MySQL admin user root has no password. So we have to give him a password as well as the administration program for MySQL which is called PHP MyAdmin is free accessible by the network and these things we have to fix. In order to do that we scroll a little bit down on the same page and we click on this link. Here Zamb will present us a form where we can enter a password for the MySQL super user called root. So here we have to enter a password for this user. Then we click on password changing in order to change the password for the root super user. Then ZAMP will inform us that the root password was successfully changed. But we do have to restart MySQL first in order for these changes to take place. On the same page and a little bit down, we may enter a username and a password in order to protect the ZAMP directory. As an example, we type the username admin and a password. When we are ready we click on make save the ZAMP directory. And here ZAMP will inform us that the ZAMP directory was successfully protected. Now we need to go and restart MySQL database in order for the changes we made before to take place. So we go and click on ZAMP control panel to open it. Then next to MySQL running we click on stop to stop it. The MySQL service is now stopped. And we click one more time on start to start it again. Now all changes we made before are valid. And we can go and click on exit to exit the control panel. In order to see the results of the changes we made before, we go and open our favorite browser and then we go and enter the address for ZAMP. And here we get this authentication required box where we have to enter the username and the password we entered before in order to protect the ZAMP directory. And this is admin and the password. And then we click on OK to continue. And as you see, we land again on the welcome screen of ZAMP. Last, we go and click on security where ZAMP will inform us that the changes we made were all successful and its pages are no longer accessible by the network for everyone.